Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, so I thought I would catch you up on some things I've been working on. Right now I've been working on my American Civil War project, which is basically taking the epic scale miniatures that I got from Warlord Games and actually painting them. If you by chance have ever really seen my channel before, I've mentioned a lot of times where I'm just not a big fan of painting miniatures, but I was like, you know, I really want to give this a try. And I don't have to paint or assemble all of them. I just have to paint enough that I can play a game of something. So we'll talk about some rule sets I've looked at in a, in a later video. But for now, just to show you kind of some things I've got done. Now, I'll just pull out here a couple cannons. Now, so far, all I've done are two cannons. And, yeah, we'll do this. Now, first of all, they look good from a distance. Up close is where you start to see my real lack of experience with painting, which is why I have a hard time wanting to paint. It's just not something that I'm really skilled at. Uh, but here we have a Union cannon, and I've tried to keep this basic because, again, they're, the figures are a little bit smaller. And what's interesting is when I watch other people showcase their epic scale figures that are holding them and are painting, they look so big in everybody's hands. And I'm like, how could you not paint those? And then when I go to paint them, they're, they shrink by a magnifold, you know, mag, you know, it's just, they shrink a lot by a magnitude of like five. I'm just, just like real tiny. And when I go to do some fine detail, instead of getting like a fine line, I just get this big of paint and it's like, ah. And forget about trying to do beards. I've maybe put a try to put a few beards on these guys, but again, when they're down on the table and you're looking at them from a distance, you don't look for beards anyway. So we've we've tried to tried to paint these up a little bit, uh, but again, basic, dark blue top, light blue pants, and um, I've got some flesh color that I use, and then I'm using a soft tone from. Who is an army painter to kind of uh, put like a wash? The only problem with that is, is it leaves it's like a glossy. So I have this anti shine, anti shine that I put on there, and it doesn't necessarily get rid of all the shine. It, it takes off quite a bit, but then at the same time, the anti shine not only does it take some of the gloss, but then it adds a little bit of a protective coat. So just in case people are handling the the figures, the paint doesn't rub off as much. But anyway. From a distance, I think they look pretty good. I think they look great. The other thing I've done, because these are just plastic, and they get pushed around really easy on the table, and I like my figures to have just a little bit of heft, so what I've done is I'm taking pennies, and I'm gluing the pennies to the bottom of the base. Uh, this doesn't count as destruction of money, which is a bad thing. I'm actually using a glue where if I needed the penny, I can take the penny off but as it stands the penny is just there it gives a little bit of weight to the figure so when you move them around I don't play on this table but um, but it does give them a little bit of, of weight which is nice kind of helps hold them in place and then here's a confederate and yeah same thing now basically it's like a the cannon carriage is just a basic kind of a green ish color I got that idea from somewhere. It's like the Napoleonics where a lot of the cannon carriages were like green. Um, now a lot of what I've been doing is experimentation too on the right way to do this. Basically, I had a base and now I just set it somewhere and I can't find it. I was like, oh, I'm going to show people what I do. Well, I can't show you what I do because I just set the base somewhere. Alright, so what I do with one of the... Oh, here it is. So I'll take the base and these things don't let me pick them up with my fingers. I gotta like, yeah, got it. So here's what one of the bases looks like. This is the infantry base. Uh, basically what I'll do is I'll take my plain glue and I'll cover this. That's not the first step, but I'll just show you because I got the base here. And then I got this little mixture I have of, it's grass and it's just a fine, kind of um, a turf type of stuff. And then what I have, another container 
I just mixed it. So like here's the base that I'm using for the grass. And then I have another container which is put away because I don't need it at the moment. But it looks like grass. And what I do is I just cut it up. So this is kind of a mixture of long clippings of fake grass, not real grass. And then that, uh, that turf stuff, the flock. Anyway, so I kind of got my own little mixture of stuff in here. And that's what I use for uh, the basing to get kind of grass. And there's some long pieces of stuff in here. Anyway, so that's what the bases are made of. Now, the ex this is where the experimentation came in. Uh, as I learned from doing some smaller the ESR at Sans Resultat figures, is you don't flock and then glue the figures down because then you're just gluing them to the flock and if that wears off, figures come off. And these have these pegs and holes so you can put the figures. What I was doing first was I was painting the basis brown so it looked like dirt. That way, depending on how I flocked, if the flock didn't quite get on the figure, then you're looking at brown and not like the default gray or whatever of the base of the figure. Then I went with green, because the green kind of matches the idea of grass. But this one, I don't know if it shows it too well, but the, the green on the base kind of stands out. It does, if you don't cover it with the flock. Um, so what I do now, and I'll see here, I think one of these Confederate units shows it pretty good, I think, on the basing here. Here's my process. It works pretty good for me. I'll take the figures. So the figures, if you're not too familiar with these, they come on strips. And what I do is I'll use a little bit of blue tack. You can see it kind of poking through. I don't use as much when I flock and base, but, but this is what I do. I take a, a little bit of blue tack and I'll put it on the bottom bases here. I will tack them in. Okay, so now I've got um, the figures. Well, I'm going out of process again. I should probably just restart the video, but I won't. After the figures painted, what I do is I'll take the figures and paint the base that they're on green because they have a base that all the figures are on the strip are attached to, and I'll paint that little base that they're attached to green. I then cover that because the wet paint the fake static grass stuff adheres to the wet paint then I have the blue tack on there and then after I cover this base all in white glue I then take the figures and I will push them down into their base then you're basically you're gonna have them with blue tack the base here all covered in white glue. What the blue tack does, because the white glue takes forever to dry, the blue tack holds the figures in place where the white glue is because the white glue until it dries solidly the figures just fall right off. So the blue tack holds them in place until that white glue dries. Now, now that the figures are anchored with the blue tack I can then sprinkle my fake grass all over the base without fear of the figures sliding off or anything like that. So what that allows me to do then is a figure unit like this after it's all painted, spray some anti-shine, um, paint the base that they're on green. Because now if you look, the grass is fully covering up the mini stand that they're on and you get to cover the uh, entirety of the base with your white glue and voila it's all covered up uh, this way I don't have to use like a brush and try to brush the white glue in and around the figures or I've seen people do a lot of interesting stuff to try and get the glue in where it needs to be so this allows me to not deal with that at all I just little blue tack tack the guys in place after I've painted their base and while their base is wet sprinkle the grass then stick them onto the base covered in all that white glue sprinkle the rest of the grass I need figures don't pop off and then a few hours later I actually I let it sit overnight but you know after it sat overnight boom it's all dry grass is in place and ta-da 
it has taken me a while to kind of get that kind of process down. Now, one day, maybe I'll walk you through that because I just explained it and uh, didn't explain it very well. But that gives me some uh, grass on there. Now, as far as painting them, and that's the struggling part because uh, once they're painted, you know, then you base them. With the Union, I looked at the artillery. The uh, infantry is definitely a lot more interesting to play with. So let's take a look here at this Confederate. They are fun. The Confederate soldiers are fun to paint because depending on what resources you look at for reference pictures and whatnot, the Confederate forces are either all kind of a butternut brown, they're just wearing brown uniforms, they just look like dirty, or you'll see a mixture of gray and brown. They're just a mixture because either A, some units did have supply depots they could get stuff from, or B, it was stuff they just brought from home, or C, stuff they picked up along the way. The South, apparently they just didn't quite have the manufacturing capacity that the North did to crank out a standard unified uniform that everybody got. They did what they could, and so you end up with a lot of folks with just wearing whatever they could bring, and whatever they had. And so that I can kind of portray in the figures a little bit. And so I've got like blue pants, brown pants. Uh, some of these folks, as I got more adventurous with my experiment in painting, um, I was able to paint some of their bedrolls are different colors. So you've got a combination of like brown hats, black hats, uh, the webbing could some some of it's white, red, different brown. It's just just a hodgepodge of colors and it's kind of fun. I even got me a guy here with red pants because why not? And uh, I only did a guy in red pants because I was watching a Civil War reenactment and there was somebody they showed in a picture, he was marching around and it looked like he was wearing some plaid sleep pajama pants. And I'm like, well, if that guy is a reenactor and he can wear some plaid pajama pants, I'm going to paint somebody with some red pants. Uh, but yeah, it gives you a little more, a little more that you can do to kind of customize up the figures a little bit. And so that's what I try to do with the Confederates is just, just kind of make them... A little bit of any old thing and for the most part I think they turn out pretty good a couple guys with red shirts and since depending on the scale of game that you play one person could represent 20 30 40 um, you know just having a couple here and there that stand out with some odd uniform still represents a group of people that might be wearing a you know maybe maybe 10 people from their regiment they prefer to wear red pants or something um, but yeah, it just gives you a little bit of diversity in your figures. Even though they're the baddies, you might as well have a little fun painting them up. Then with the Union troops, they are a little more standardized. Here's another Confederate group. And again, I was going more for, oh, I already showed that one, just more for tabletop readiness. Even the officer is just a little, a little simplistic. I did try to experiment on the horse a little bit. I don't know if the camera is really zoomed in. I'm not one to be giving t painting tips at all, but just to kind of show you where I'm at there is um, this was one color of brown and then I actually had just a little, slightly lighter shade of brown that I tried to hit the high point. So I gave it, tried to give it natural shading without using a wash. I think ultimately I did end up putting a wash over this, but just in the initial painting, um, I tried to do some natural shading and things. Just again, learning and experimenting, but it's trying to find the right shades of brown and different things to, you know, identify the, the saddle and, and trying to pick out some details. And it's difficult for me. Uh, again, it's just hard for me to see everything at this scale. When I watch other people on YouTube paint these things, I, I mean, again, it feels like they're painting these huge figures, and why can't you see the detail? But then when I go to do it, I'm like, eh, you know, just, just struggling. But there's an officer, and I did a Union soldier as well. He's up here. 
they gave him red pants. I thought, yeah, why, why couldn't a cavalry guy have red pants? And I know that all their webbing and stuff wasn't necessarily white, but just to give the Union soldiers a little more color as well, I, I, I did give some of them personality. And so I like some of the, the white belts and, and webbing and stuff like that. They still got like some black belts here and there, but, um, you know, just to kind of make them stand out a little bit. I felt like you don't have as much freedom when painting your Union soldiers as you do the Confederates. So I try to pick for a stand kind of a, a theme. And this is the basic theme. Uh, dark blue top, kind of light blue on the bottom. This is one of the first ones I tried. And here's what I was talking about where you can see the brown base that they're standing on. It really stood out. So sure, you could say it's dirt, but then the rest of the base is you know, grass. And then probably I did a couple with that, that brown basing and then eventually I went to green and then flocking the wet green paint so their their bases that they're standing on is camouflaged even more. And then the other thing I did was after I painted this, I went back with the light blue for the pants and tried to pick out highlights. But then somehow it made the pants seem really, really bright again. So now most of them Let's see here. Most of the Union kind of look like this. They got dirty. Even though the uh, their pants are lighter blue, they still retain some dirt, dirtiness to them. They've been out in the field marching around. Uh, but you can tell they got the dark blue tops. And then uh, a lot of them have, you can see kind of their white webbing on them. And try to catch out some bedrolls and different things that they're wearing. But again, more standardized in coloring, not a whole lot of freedom. I tried to, you know, my understanding is the Union forces had access to more of a, a standard uniform. So generally within a group, they all are kind of painted very similar. But then some of the stands, oops, I just bumped the camera. But then some of the stands, uh, one stand to another stand, they might have some slight variations. But then here's... Here's one of the command units for the Union's soldiers, and this was the other one I did. Uh, you know, I don't think, from a distance, I don't think they look too bad. Again, if you get up close, you can see that a lot of painting mistakes and errors, but it is what it is. So there's a command unit. All together, I don't have a whole lot painted yet. I feel like with the American Civil War, just like maybe Napoleonics or something, you really gotta have a lot of these guys painted up so you can have regiments and divisions and brigades. Kinda really depends on the rule set you're using, which we'll talk about rule sets in, a, in a, another video. But I got two commands. The idea was I wanted to have, because I was trying to learn Pickett's Charge, and I could say this was a standard unit, was gonna be a command unit and three, but I'm actually working on a different rule set and I'm going to need four. So I have one more group of Union to paint and the Union will be done. And the cannons I'll be able to paint more at some point, but that's not as important as having the infantry on the table. And I, again, I think from a distance it looks impressive having all these guys all lined up and um, you know, it just, it does, it feels kind of epic. It feels like there's a lot. And then when you start to put them in line, to me, that just gives a really strong, that crowded, you know, there's a lot of people in a nice long line. I think they look great. So I'm happy that I decided to break down and paint them. Now I gotta catch up on the Confederates. I have one more Union painted than I do Confederates. So I have currently just enough Confederates that if I did like Pickett's Charge, uh, in order to get a nice full game of Pickett's Charge, you still need a lot of people painted up. That's that's still needed. But I'm just saying for just a basic game, I was playing with my son. We just had like a couple of these units that could go up and fight and skirmish. But there's some Confederates there too. Um, but it's a start. It's a start. From having pretty much no experience really painting, well, absolutely no experience painting American Civil War to just kind of muddling my way through it. 
from a distance. I think they look pretty good. They look pretty good on the, on the actual gaming table. But that's where I'm at. That's what I've been doing for a while, is just trying to do a unit. In fact, here's one more Confederate I have. And just to kind of wrap up the hobbiness on that, what I did for this one, I primed these with a, I got it right here. Uh, this is an army painter, but it's the Gray Wolf. And I didn't realize at the time, but Gray Wolf is, I think, for Space Marines, and it's actually more of a blue than gray. But uh, I haven't based all my Confederates with this, uh, but I found that, again, just to give the Confederates some more diversity and a little more fun when painting them, I guess, I just try this color to base. But sometimes when I base for the Confederates, I mostly just do this Union Uniform Gray. Problem is with the Uniform Gray, it's really dark, and I was hoping to find something a little lighter but there's not a whole lot of, uh, at least at my local game shop, of a lighter gray. This is this is it. So if I, there was a, just maybe a slightly lighter shade of gray that I could spray these things on, it would help out a lot when I go to, you know, um, put the the shading and stuff like that on them. And then for the Union, I just spray them with Ultramarine Blue. Which, I mean, works pretty good once you start to put the soft tone and whatnot on there. You get blue jackets and light blue plant pants. I've got some other shades of blue that I try. Again, maybe sometimes just to give them a little diversity. But again, once you kind of pull yourself back from the game, all you see is blue pants and blue shirts and then gray and various colors on the table. So I think I'll just kind of keep to just spray in it because this is the color they come with not painted and that's a pretty good blue but again I've also watched like uh, when I watch the movie Glory or I see some other stuff sometimes those Union jackets they look like they're black they're just such a dark blue that you know even even among the Union soldiers there's I guess it depends on where the uniform was manufactured the cloth they had at that time uh, there's still some diversity among the Union troops even though they were a little more standardized than the South. That's how I see it. Uh, clearly I could be wrong because I'm, I'm kind of new to all of this so I'm just kind of going on what to me looks like Civil War soldiers and paint jobs. But that's pretty much it. We'll just put a couple things for you to look at and uh, we'll end it right there. But that's where I'm at so far in the hobby. I hope to get enough painted pretty soon that um, when I do actually get to play a Civil War game with these, we'll have some painted figures for it. Otherwise, the table is mostly going to be these plastics unpainted. And it's like, man, now that I've painted some, why would I want to play with unpainted figures? Why was I doing that my whole life? I still do. But at least with the Civil War, hopefully I'll have some painted up. All right, thanks a lot, and we will talk to you later.